James, do you know this song that's playing right now? You know this, James. Stop playing. I don't know. You know yeah. this one. Stop playing with us, man. See, different cultures. I might have to Shazam it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, this, you know, you know, this is that one by Will Smith. You know it. <laughs> Stop it. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stop it. Nope. Hey, well, uh, can I ask James a question before we like well, really dive into James is here. Like James has been here for like three hours. Yeah, he, so he fed us. Well, yeah. fed me. Um we this is like completely random. But do you know where that picture is and where it's from with Vladi with the guns? Vladi with the guns. You never seen that? Vladi with the shot. He's like getting out of a uh SUV, a black SUV, and it looks like a like a mobster type uh picture. Are you and sure every time Vladi Photoshop? does something like was going to work, one of the King's Herald guys put it out there and he's walking. <laughs> it looks like he's in like a movie and they're about to like, all right, let's go execute this guy. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, where is this picture oh, from? I see it. I see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you happen to know what where is this that? picture is from? Um, I, it looks like it's a Super Bowl party. Like if you look in the what back, kind of party is that? I don't know. If you look at the back, there's like a there's like a big f- banner or a TV <laughs> or something. Like what is happening? But I saw it. I don't know why he was up, up hanging around like on my Twitter timeline yesterday. But he was in that party. All that party. That uh, picture always comes it, up when something goes on with Vladi. It appears. It I don't think it's real, but something... I'm just saying like. Was no, it a movie? Or it like, is real. Those guns were real? It with a, them dressed like that? Dressed like a mobster. Oh, that looks like... Wait, what do you... Oh, oh, maybe we're looking at two different pictures. Then. There's, there are two different pictures. There's <laughs> one of him getting out of a car. That's the one, I, that's the one like I'm the looking at. With the black SUV and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's another of him at a party. Does Vladi <laughs> Divots really like guns? This is, this is intriguing. <laughs> What, what is know. what is happening? I always wondered, like, what kind of picture is this? Where'd they get it from? It, it's it, it appears to be some sort of. It looks like a movie. The cellar. This doesn't look like a movie. It does. It, well, it looks like a movie scene. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what this is. John Bull just tagged like all of the so we could see all of the pictures. It kind of looks like Old Town Sack. Am I crazy? <laughs> that looks absolutely like, looks like Old Sack. It looks like he's about to. Him and his crew are about to jam well, somebody. What is out. happening? The streets too wide. Can't you just call Vlade and ask him? I could text <laughs> Vlade right now and say, "Hey, what is this? Why are there pictures of you holding shotguns all I've over?" I've seen those pictures before, <laughs> but uh... now actually, so now I see the other one that you're talking about. This is the. This looks like the same event. Yeah, it's the same thing. The one with him getting out the truck. That's just him. That's the beginning, and then he went and shot a gun off into the air. Someone, like he he celebrates. I love Christmas. when you always do stuff like, "Hey, real quick, I want to ask James a question." Well, I, thought, you derail I thought the I whole the hour. Eight didn't, minutes later, I'm trying I thought to I figure was the out only one who that. didn't know where this came from. I knew James would have known, but I guess I feel like Jill. Jill has to know. Jill, Jill knows know. everything. Sure Jill know. You know the best part about Vlade is you can't tell if he's uh, 23 or 47 or like 52 in that picture. <laughs> you you just can't tell. You have no idea how old he is. Yeah, this was right after the Western Conference Finals that he fired that out, right? <laughs> Gee, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, man. That's hilarious. Anything else you want to ask Cam before we... Not that I could think of. How right are you now. feeling today, James? Uh, oh, You got to talk to Monty yeah, today. How, you talked to De'Aaron today. But, okay. By the uh, way, just re- hey, real quick, <laughs> you posted a video. My that, bad. I forgot no, to tell you to bleed. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got hip to it in the chat, so we watched it during a commercial break. But we we pop we we laughed when he said, "Oh crap!" So what did did he spoil? Kevin Herter is going to the three point contest. They they, they, ah, they acted like <laughs> no, they have no idea. Afterwards, they're like, "Dear's like, oh, they sold okay. Oh, like I, I'm not sure, you know. Oh, like, they know sold it. Uh, All right, yeah. So, All right." I'm going to guess yes. Yeah, I'm yeah. well yeah, he said it way too confidently. He said it because when he responded to you, he was like, "Oh crap, I'm in trouble." Well, <laughs> like, he I clearly have he goes, "Well, that. we're going to have four guys there." And I'm like, "Who's the four? And he just kind of looks at me and is like, "Well, Kevin, Kevin at yeah. the three-point shootout." 
<laughs> like it was a great exchange, and is I'm that really confirmed. I'm really sorry we can't play it on the radio because yeah. of De'Aaron's response, but it was a great exchange. It was fun. It, and, um, he was excited. I, I think that's like today, like the biggest takeaway is like I don't think he, he was, was ex- well. He was trying him. to act like he wasn't excited, but he he was because he didn't. He did not look excited. Oh no, he's super. I mean, he, he looked excited for Kevin Herter. <laughs> but he didn't look excited for himself at, at all. the same time. Like he, he's always said like, look, like if we make, if we, if we're good, I'll get, I'll get an invite. That's the way it goes. If I'm the best player on our team and like, we're good, then I'll, I'll get invited to the all-star game. Mm-hmm. And then he said today, he's like, yeah, you know, I probably should have made it before you're like, Whoa, like, okay. Mm-hmm. You should have made it before. Yeah. And, and then Chris Tavares even said, did you mean like, last week when it was announced or do you mean before or before he goes both yeah, yeah he was spicy he's like yeah, he was he, spicy for sure he is spicy i i like it you know and you know you can just see them there with like a baby bjorn and like little earmuffs on on the baby and like they're gonna make a a, a family trip out of it uh, they're excited i i don't believe him when he kind of downplays it no he's excited he didn't want to get his hopes up he didn't mm-hmm. think he was going to get there he was, you know, being self-deprecating and and like probably his own harshest critic. Uh, and then when the news came today, it's it's a great day for Sacramento. It's a great I, day for is. the Kings. It I is. felt so bad for him when he didn't make the team initially. I was like, I felt bad because I said this a number of times. He worked his ass off this offseason. Not to say that maybe he didn't other times, but I, he sacrificed. He 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 worked his butt off this offseason. And he prepared himself probably like no other season before. And he ended up getting the results, not only personally, but team wise. He had done everything that he was supposed to do and needed to do. And he he was in there. And, and I I no disrespect to, to Triple J, but for him to get robbed like that from a guy like Triple J, the type of season that mm-hmm. that he's having, I, I felt really bad for De'Aaron. So I'm glad it all worked out for him. Because he he absolutely deserved this. I totally agree. Like the way that the Kings have played, uh, for for someone like and this isn't like a total knock on Jaron Jackson Jr. I mean, he's a very, very good defensive player. He might win defensive player of the year, but like one player has kind of been in line for it. Fox has been in line, and you keep telling him, like, hey, you're not making the team because your team's not good enough. And so to move the goalposts on him, mm-hmm. to me, that was unfair. It was full on Charlie Brown and Lucy. They just pulled the football right out mm-hmm. from underneath him and he goes flying through the air. He didn't have time, though, to even worry about it. It was the day yeah, that yeah. his wife went into labor and, you know, they had other things cooking. Yeah. And, and he, he really didn't even have time to have that moment. So I think it's cool. He, like, you know, he's like, of course, the little guy won't be able to like really remember any of this but it's something we can go back later and, and kind of share as a family and you know he'll get to see that he was there for all-star weekend and you know his dad made it and his dad was cool like got to go to something cool like this so i'm excited for him certainly a life-changing year for him uh on many 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 different uh aspects or life-changing season obviously it's a new year but uh, a life-changing season for De'Aaron fox for many different reasons yeah um monty well, mcnair's Real quick, spoke today. <laughs> Real quick, you called for it, Jill. Adds that picture is from Serbian Christmas. There's a whole YouTube video of them shooting into the air in celebration. Damn, but she knows everything. Where in Serbia? It because looked, it was, you that can like celebrate sack, guess, Serbian Christmas wherever you want, but you're not allowed to just run <laughs> around true. old sack shooting guns in the air. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Jill just has the answers. I, I just report them. All right. <laughs> Monty McNair spoke today. <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, there's actually quite, there's a number of things that stood out for me that we could talk about, but what stood out for you talking to him? I think, okay, so he was asked, was it by my my friend Brendan Nunes uh, about how he's, like he's changed over the course of his like two plus years. Uh, it may not have been Brendan, but, but I th- think it was. And, I think that that's what stood out. He said, I'm just way more comfortable talking to the media. And I agree. Like he was not a robot today. Um, He didn't really answer the question of why. I mean, I guess he did, but like 
you know, why he didn't go out and do anything at the, at the trade deadline. He wants to give this time, this team more time to grow together. That's fine and all, but like five of these guys are free agents at the end of the season. It's not like you had to worry about that. With some of these guys, um, maybe some of them will be back. Maybe some of them won't, but um, yeah, overall, I didn't think he was like horribly defensive. Uh, he kind of like stood by his line that he wants to give this team as much room to grow. And that was kind of, that was it. Like there were some deals that they looked at, nothing really worked out. And, you know, we're, we're going to ride with this group down the, down the stretch. Um, he didn't also commit to, uh, the buyout market or anything else. He basically said, Hey, if there's something out there that makes us better and we're able to land something, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as of right now, you know, we're going to roll with what we got. I think me and Damian both got a sense of uh, confidence that he has in this team. Like he, like, yeah, they were looking to make deals and things of that nature, but it really came off. Like he said, I, he didn't say this, but it felt like we have enough here. Like we have enough with this roster to get it done. I know. I think it was your question when he asked, you know, answered about the defensive um, statistics and how the team, do they have enough defensively and things of that nature. And I just got a, I got a confident, vibe from Monty McNair not a vibe of man we struck out trying to make deals it was hey there we made some calls but I really like the group that we have regardless of what happened yesterday yeah I mean what else are you supposed to say the day after you don't do anything at the trade deadline I mean you're supposed to say man I blew it I had seven other deals on the table I had a better deal two days ago oh boy no you're no, that's not what you're <laughs> supposed to say you're supposed to say like yeah we're this Let's go. But Let's I also think you can't you can't hide certain things. And the number one thing that stood out for me when when we aired that press conference today was he came across as very confident. He did not come across like he was unsure about the way the trade de deadline went, frustrated with how the trade deadline went, or or anything along those lines. He spoke about this team for in in my interpretation. He spoke about this team with a lot of confidence. And that was my biggest takeaway from Monty McNair today. Yeah. I mean, he did speak about the team with confidence. Like, and that's what you're supposed to do when your team's the third seed in the Western Conference. Mm -hmm. You know, even like the uh the question that I asked him late, like De'Aaron Fox making the all-star team is like the biggest validation for him as a general manager ever. Mm -hmm. Like you mm -hmm. you made one of the biggest swings you could possibly make. You took a young guy who just made the all-star team. And by making that move, you turned it into two all-stars. You, you might've turned it into three. Yeah. To be honest, if you count Tyrese, cause I don't know that Tyrese would have been an all-star here by going through with no, that trade. It, you mm -hmm. might've turned three of them mm -hmm. into all-stars. No, it's very true. And it's not that I think that, that Fox and Halliburton couldn't have coexisted or couldn't have come to some consensus. It's that you could never have maximized them. And by making this move, he maximized what you're saying at Tyrese, but he also maximized Fox and Sabonis. And Sabonis is, is you know, whether he was going to be an all-star a bunch of times after, you know, his run in Indiana, we have no idea, but he is now. He's going to be an all-star multiple years here in Sacramento. And as long as he stays healthy and everything goes well, he's going to be a multi-time all-star here as well. Um and it's because you have Fox that helps him maximize his talents and he helps maximize Fox. And then you, these two are really easy to build the pieces around. Mm -hmm. Like go get me shooters, go get me lengthy shooters. Now, you know, what really works now go get different versions of these. Some of these players that might have better length, might have better defensive acumen, like go get some of the other pieces. That's fine. But you can see a very easy picture where these guys are are simple to put other pieces around um and he's he literally turned De'Aaron fox into an all-star by getting a player that maximizes him mm -hmm. and i i think it's a it's something that like he won't admit is like a huge win for him it's a huge win for him like i can disagree with some of the things he does and some of the ways that he goes about adding pieces or doesn't add pieces at the deadline but like the dude deserves his his extension no matter what because he just got you two all-stars and he's got your team third in the western conference mm -hmm. i mean that's that's impressive he got he has you eight games over 500 regardless of what you are in the standings 
he has you, your team eight games over 500 and prime to break a 16 year playoff drought. Do you know this? Let's go back a year or so ago because I want to give Monty all his flowers right now. Um, do you know if the deal to trade Tyrese for Sabonis was his baby, so to speak? Like he's the one that said, I want to do this, and then went around convincing people that this is what we should do, or did he have to be convinced by someone? Do you know how that story went? You know, it's a good question. I, I will tell you this, that there had to be conversations with Vivek to make sure that it was communicated like this is what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, like he had to convince Vivek that trading Tyrese Halliburton was right. the right thing. Right. And at the end of the day, uh, that's one thing that I really like about Monty. Um, like I, I've had conversations with him, uh, like plenty of conversations with him over the last um couple of years that he's been here but like he wins battles behind the scenes mm. like he talks to vivek ronadive almost every single day and he is convincing enough in that setting to to keep the kings on course mm. where i feel like in past situations that was not the case where other people weren't able to convince somebody to choose the right path and, you know, we saw it with Mike Brown. We saw it with the Sabonis trade. Um, you know, like we keep seeing this this perfect path that Monty has kind of like set forth for the Kings. And you hope that he continues to build on that. But like you got a guy that can convince the boss of the right path to go. Mm -hmm. And in Sacramento, that's huge because that has not been the case multiple times where things go sideways and it's, it's not one person's fault, regardless of how much we heap, uh, you know, sort of criticism on Vivek Ronadive. None of those decisions were made on his own. There's always somebody in Sacramento sneaking around, like whispering in people's ears. And I'm not saying one person, I'm not saying, I'm not pointing a finger at someone in the organization now, but in the past, there's always somebody, it doesn't matter who it is. There's always somebody. And I feel like, for one of the few times you got someone who's whispering in his ear that has the right motivation, the right moral compass for, for success. And, and these, these wins, so to speak of, you know, the trade and the draft picks and the coaching decision and free agency, that's all just building equity in his relationship with a or whatever. Like it could be, it, it may not have to be much more convincing anymore. Right. Like the may look at it where it's, you know, this guy last four times, he's had to convince me of something and he's been right. Monty, you ain't even got to tell me, man. You just, if that's what you feel, I'm riding with you. You may have built that type of equity up with this run that he's been on. Vivek is never going to be someone that doesn't want to know all the details. You, no matter what, you're going to have to share with him everything. You're going to have to lay it out for him. That's who he is. It's how he thinks. You're going to have to sell whatever it is you're doing to him mm. a and that's that's okay i mean everyone's different we all like in life we've all had bosses we all have to figure out how to work with each individual bosses you know like even for me i've said this multiple times like every time the king switch head coaches which has been nine times in my 13 years like it's it's like starting a new job where you've got to figure out ways to build relationships and what a, a coach likes and doesn't like and you know how they they manage like I talk to players and and media members today. I've never been through anything like this. Like the Kings just played, what was it, five games in seven nights? Flew home and had practice yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I've never seen this. Like we have shoot around every single home game without fail, unless it's the second night of a back to back. We don't have a shoot around that morning. Every other game we have shoot around. Like there, this team practices more than. Like probably at this point in the season, 12 to 15 more practices than any team I've ever covered. I mean, it's like exhausting for the players. It's exhausting for media to be there every, we're there all the time with this team. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting vibe that they have going, but it's good. You think they're, you, and I think you posted a video yesterday. They were a little lively at, 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 at practice. Do you think that's just the post trade deadline exhale from a lot of those guys yeah 
I mean, that's what it is. Again, like I've seen so many players that just like it's tough. Like we we don't really talk about that aspect yeah. of it. Like you know, you you had the video of Kessler yesterday. Like <laughs> it's it's a grown man. Hmm. It's a twenty two year old young man who just got shipped from Brooklyn to Sacramento, and it's like, oh god, and he and he's smiling, and he, you know he's doing all the things. It's like God, it has to be so tough for these guys. He got drafted to a team last year or traded to a team after travel, whatever, however he got to Brooklyn. Um, you know, he's a second round pick. He joined a team with like Kyrie Irving yeah. and, and KD and, you know, Joe Harris and like a, a, a James Harden, like a, a really, really good team. And he, it's all blown up. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even know what's going through his head. Talk about, you know, how many, I mean, what Davion Mitchell's had three head coaches, like that's one thing, but at least you're still in the same place. At least you still have, you know, some of the same people around you, the same players. You know, oh, some he's had multiple coaches. head. He's had three head coaches now too. Yeah. Right. This he season. He's had three head coaches this season. He didn't <laughs> seen it all in the NBA. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. Like some of the, the situations that these young guys get put in, it's just horrible. Like I've seen it time and time again, especially here in Sacramento. Like yeah. it's just, like you break the spirit of some of these kids, you you make them lose their their way because you, you don't have the structure and stability in place to support them, and it's tough, you know. So we're talking about that with the, the 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 Rockets, and and even we use the example of James Wiseman today. Like, how is James Wiseman? If you believe James Wiseman has game, how is he going to get better in Detroit? We were talking about Jabari Smith, you know how are those guys going to get better in Houston? Like it, it's, it's tough. We look at it. Oh, like Paolo, you got free reign to do all this stuff. Like, great. But like, then what, like, how are you going to get better? And I think Paolo and Orlando situation is a little bit different than Houston and Detroit. I feel bad for those young guys there. Cause I just, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I feel like they're going to wind up being those players that get lost. Can't develop and then just get moved around. I totally agree. I mean, like how many first round picks have I watched just bust out in Sacramento? Hmm. Like Too Sacramento, many. It, it's really sad for a lot of, it, it's not just the, the young guys get, get raked over the coals. The older guys, this is their last NBA stop. Hmm. Like, will Alex Len get another job after this? Hmm. I don't know, but I can tell you that Costa Kufis was like known around the league as an NBA good guy. Still, he was like 30. Couldn't get another job. I mean, he's playing right now in England, mm -hmm. like 33 years old, couldn't get a job after his contract here for no reason. But how many guys can I tell you like left here and never got another NBA job? Oh, it's a stack. Mm -hmm. So you, you, that's one of the things, the cultural things you have to change. You have to change the development of young players and, and how they're viewed and the stability and support that you put around them. And then you have to change where you're not like a place that people fear going. Uh, and you know it, it's going to take a lot. It, it's not just one one good season of play. You know, we'll come back. We'll talk more with James Ham, uh, and we'll prepare for the Sacramento Kings and the Dallas Mavericks. That two game series. Really, we'll look at it these next three games because you got the Mavericks and you got Phoenix. This mm -hmm. is a big stretch here uh, for Sacramento. So we'll talk with James Ham uh, when we return here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN thirteen twenty. Good stuff. <clears throat> good good stuff. Guys, I, don't, I hate to do this. Let me take this call real quick. <laughs> BC, I can multitask. And Shill, Costa <laughs> Kufis didn't suck. He's an old school big man, but that's a, a really, really solid veteran player that could have helped teams. And maybe the game has kind of left him, uh, you know, gone gone away that's that style of big but still like good defender good in the pick and roll great rebounder per minute would always do something that you remembered costa 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 did i did i give you the uh, i'm gonna send you a text right now this is not for air uh, but no it, it's it's um don't, don't worry everybody i'll read it it's it's literally the funniest thing. Well, I'll just send it to you, and then you can just ask me. Hmm. Uh, 
That's my little dude. At so <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. I was just hey Kenny, come here for a sec. Oh yeah, the, the little guy looks exactly like you. Oh he does. This is this is my little dude at soccer pictures. <laughs> goodness gracious. <laughs> He does look like just like a little ham. He, he, he looks exactly like a little ham. Oh, oh my gosh. That's a little ham. Yeah. I guess my oldest played a part in that, like saying, hey, why don't you Not do this? surprising. Not youngest, surprising like, at all. And then I like click on the website with everyone's pictures, and then there it is. I'm like, oh, Jesus, this better not make the yearbook. So, so, <laughs> so all the parents can oh, see those it. Those are the school pictures, school soccer team pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> oh, well. look, at, look at we were we were talking about uh we were talking about cream earlier like look at this joint right here that's what they do that's that's at section 105 that's how it works but then look, look, look at that oh, yeah, wait I'm where's this this is at section 105 tonight at the game i'm getting some of that yeah. oh what is, is that, that? yeah okay so well, wait to wait wait till you see what it looks like oh. wait to wait till you see the finished product then you see what the ice cream looks like Wait, and it's a a machine? Yep. Oh, what the? Hell? Yep. Wow. Are they are they just at the Kings game? Do they have a location? You know, ah. we need to do. We need to get a distributorship and then put those at high schools. Oh, we eaten at that point, literally and figuratively. Uh oh. I hope Mike. The eagle has I don't know if Mike landed. got some got some plant based foot. Oh, they got Oreos. Oh, let's M and M's. Go. Let's go. Let's go. I, I don't know if Mike's That's what got. I need tonight. I don't know if Mike's got any plant-based uh, ice cream for me, but if he do, Mike, we'll you, figure it out. You get my money tonight, buddy. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm all over that Oreo joint. Believe that. Believe that. I might, I might, I might pop in there before I even go downstairs. <laughs> Believe that. Jesse, uh, allegedly reporting, it's been reported that the PBC sent back a new revised contract that would allow Golden Boy to uh, be the main, or DAZN to be the main promoter for the rematch. So that hurdle seems to be cleared. That's good. This, the, the fight needs to happen. It needs to happen. To be honest with you, they need to figure this out like now, because if they do, in the next like 24 hours, they could have commercials run during the Super Bowl. That's big time. Yeah, I don't think there's a bigger fight out there right now. You can make no, it's the biggest fight in boxing. Even in like even with the UFC, I think it's like the biggest fight. Like as far yeah, as all the I, combat the biggest sports. fight in combat sports. Jam, jam, James. What's your thoughts? Jam. <laughs> what's your thoughts on Tank versus Ryan Garcia? I have no idea who any of these people are. <laughs> jam. <laughs> I got stuck between James and Ham. So I called him Jam. <laughs> Whoa, Jam. Jam. You're not the only one who, who has said that like that. Jam. <laughs> Daddy Jam for me. <clears throat> guess what? Uh, guess what happened to me today? You got free Taco Bell? I did get free Taco Bell. Shout out to my man. <laughs> my man, Jam. Big ups to him. Um, it, was, it was a little nostalgic today. As I woke up this morning, I left the TV on last night. I woke up this morning too. Good old charm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Good old charm. That's really strange that that's here. They, they still, well, you know, that's the whole thing. That's the show. Uh, that's the TNT you watch show. TNT basketball. Yeah. And yeah. You leave it on that channel, and you wake up, and Charm is on. Shout out to my girl Alyssa Milano. I always loved Alyssa Milano. Mm, me too. That's my girl. Uh, yeah, that's like when you're my age. That's your dream girl. Yeah. <laughs> who's the boss? And Melissa yeah, Milano is Roll Tide. That's right. That's yeah. right. Roll Tide. Alyssa Milano and um, what's her name? Jennifer Love Hewitt. I, I used to like her too.
Live on Odyssey app, getting you ready for the Sacramento Kings and the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, getting you ready for your weekend. We appreciate you so much for being with us. If you're on YouTube, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe buttons. Uh, if you're on the Odyssey app, make sure you hit the heart button in the upper right-hand corner. Save us as your favorite radio station, wherever you are. We appreciate you so much uh, for being with us. James, before we move on to tonight's game, which I think will be uh, pretty interesting, Luka Doncic not playing despite... What Shams reported earlier today, uh, Luca not going tonight. Said he hopes he to go that tweet, uh, tomorrow. Well, I, I would too. It was wrong. <laughs> yeah, everybody ready to see Luca and Kyrie. We thought it was happening here in Sacramento. Now maybe it does tomorrow, right. uh, but it's not happening tonight. We'll get to that uh, in just a few minutes. You, we, I think I, I think I know how you feel, but we talked about it so much. I, I, I do want to ask you the the, the question kind of plainly. We talked about the Harrison Barnes dilemma all last offseason leading through this season. And even for a few minutes, we spoke about, OK, we're living it. What would you do? And now that the trade deadline is passed, Harrison Barnes will be here for the remainder of the season. We have no idea what's ahead. Are you good with that decision? I mean, you had to be when they started winning. You had to be. I mean, it is what it is. Like I, I told you guys for this, like. It is a good situation, but it's also worst case scenario for this team because you're now risking losing a very valuable player who will, you know, go on to make a lot more money in the league for the next four or five years. And you don't know if you're going to be able to retain him or not. And you also don't know if you can replace his spot in the rotation next year. And it's something that like, like I looked at at the trade deadline, even if you, you, didn't trade him, but if you would have found someone else that you could at least had some idea that might be able to help you out in, in case you go into this off season and you have like literally zero small forward, that would be a problem. And I, I think it's something that the Kings are going to have to deal with. They're going to have to deal with it quickly. It's not like, like this team is not going to be in the top five or the top 10. They're probably going to have a draft pick between like number 15 and number 25. So that's not where you find starting small forwards. You can find one two year for two years from now or three years from now, but that's not typically where you find guys that just instantly step onto the court and are ready to help you out. And I guess you could go like double up on Murray's and go grab the other one. Uh, and, and like that's the only thing better than one Murray's. Yeah, I'd be yeah, so two Murray's. Yeah. Oh, that'd be tough. They <laughs> literally look exactly the same. They're oh, they're, they're identical. There's identical. some sometimes with identical twins. There's distinctions that you could. There, I they could fool everybody. <laughs> They, Everyone, uh, all the time. Are they? They they're the same grade, right? Keegan just left early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just at a different point in their development, and like it, it kind of looks like Iowa. They only allow one player to be good per season. <laughs> That's kind of like their their the way they handle things. Like, okay, this guy is our superstar this year. Go. Mm -hmm. And so it was Keegan last year, and Chris has been really good, really but he's good. still going to be around. If he does enter this year's draft, which I pretty much guarantee he will, he's going to be right in that range, 15 to 20. And so, like, I, I don't know. They're, you're going to have other options and stuff, but uh, and the Kings will have cap space, but how many times have the Kings ever been able to go out and get somebody? And I'll keep saying it. Like, Vlade Divac is the best free agent the Kings have ever signed, mm -hmm. and like they, the Kings have never successfully gone out and got a player like in his prime or at that age as good as Harrison Barnes is. Harrison Barnes isn't going anywhere. I hope not. I don't think so. Either. Like at least for, if you can get him for like a three-year deal, like yeah. I've said, like a three or 45 or three or 48 million, um, where it's a declining scale. So 17, 16, 15 or 16, 15, 14, that, that to me makes a lot of sense, but yeah. He's also got to want to be here and everything else. You need this situation to be good the rest of the season and to play out like, like continue the Cinderella story. Yeah. You know, two, it's, two year with a player option, you know, is that something? Yeah. I mean, he is 30. He'll be 31 next season. So like, that's, you always have to be cautious. You like, you just never know. Every player's different when they start to break down. And so you got it. I feel like you do a three plus one. Because uh, if you okay. do a two okay. plus one, he's a you, you essentially have to make another decision, like yeah, almost immediately. Just, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I would think that like even you could probably do a like a team option for year three or something, but I, I don't know. Like mm -hmm. that that seems like a, he's a he's still a really good NBA player. He is, he is. you know, and like people want to like uh, we had the the situation early in the season where it looked like he was 
he was dead. done. It looked like he yeah. was dead. Cooked. Yes. Yeah, but for like five games, and then after that, he's been he's been really good. And, and then he looked like Michael Jordan. Now, Whose game is it? <laughs> It's What's Harrison, his but that was an actual tweet by Damian Barnes. Um, you still have that issue, though, that even though you can like Harrison Barnes and you want Harrison Barnes back and everything else, you still need more length and athleticism at the three and the four. You still need a shot blocker at that position because Sabonis is is who Sabonis is. You mm-hmm. Sabonis can't make his arms grow like four inches. He just can't. And, and so he's not going to be a great shot blocker. He can be a decent rim protector, as far as keeping guys away, but you need more length and athleticism at the three and the four. Well, like Mason Plumley could be in. Uh, like, we're st- let's say something nice about Mason Plumley. That could be a target this off season. Like he's only under contract for a few months. Yeah, but he's more of a five. So like that, that could be your reserve five. You know, but the uh, the other positions you need even like Keegan has decent length and decent athleticism, but he's not like what we're seeing from some of these guys that well, are out there. Well, and I, I don't want to make like it can't be solved, but then that like um, that's a bit of a problem in itself. Uh, maybe, maybe not a problem, but this is what I talk about when you talk about training for somebody because the shortcomings of Sabonis are a hundred percent correct, but who's coming off the floor. Like it's almost, almost like you're locked into Keegan and Sabonis. That's what you're going to have to do. And I think maybe you get better, with perimeter defense and you do gang rebounding and things of that nature. But it's not like you have a, like last year when Trey Lyles was playing and he was the starting four. It's like, well, you can get better at that spot. Like you can go get a free agent and get a, a four that fits better with Sabonis and can rim protect. That's not really this case. Like Keegan's the starting four. Well, I think the good thing that they've seen this season from Keegan is you were able to put him at the three quite a few times and have him just hold his own. And so you're looking at him like we talked about it before the season. He's a four that might be able to play some three. I think now you're looking at him as a potential three, four. Like, can you put him at the three long term? Can he be your your long term answer at small forward position? And the key to this is like an NBA offseason. When you get a young player like him, and I've even talked to like some, you know, people within the walls of, of golden one center there, they say like one of the good things they like, um, about Keegan is that he's, he's got a young body. So he's not, he's a a bit of a late bloomer. And so there's still potential for his body to change. Hmm. And I don't mean grow and, and get taller, but, like to mature. And, and so when the Kings get him in the off season, you already, you kind of know who he is, right? But if you can make him into more of a small forward body right now, as a second year player, this off season, like, I think you can do that. You can work with his mechanics. You can work with his flexibility. Uh, you can like choose like, you know, like lean body over like bulking him up to play the four. And I kind of believe that that's where the Kings are going to head. Like they, they now know that he can play some three and he's probably going to be pushed more that way. Well, it's the Dallas Mavericks tonight and we know it's the Dallas Mavericks tonight and tomorrow. Uh, we know that the Dallas Mavericks like to get up a lot of threes. This is a, I thought Dallas was, was really, we talked about this with uh, both, both Trista and, and Will Z earlier. And it's going to be a similar game because Luca's not back tonight. So it's it's Kyrie and everybody else. And that offense looked really smooth uh, with Kyrie Irving kind of running it uh, and Kyrie Irving being the primary scorer. He had all five uh, starters in double digits. Now, this was an entirely different game in the fact that they were playing the Los Angeles Clippers, which is normally going to keep the game relatively low scoring. And Sacramento, obviously, is not going to do that. Their bench wasn't particularly good in that game. So I, I think there's a, a a number of areas that Sacramento could take advantage of uh, this particular team. But the overall long-winded point that I'm trying to make is Dallas looked really good in that first outing with Kyrie. It's not going to look like that when Luka returns. I don't know what it's going to look like when Luka returns. But that first outing, it looked it looked really good with a lot of capable scores. Yeah, we're going to have to give that team a little bit of time 
Like that is such a massive swing for the fence and brings in such a dominant personality and dominant style of player. Uh, the good thing about Kyrie, which I, I didn't think I'd ever put those words together. <laughs> Damn. Um, <laughs> the good thing about him though, is that he has played with great players in the past and he, yeah, he understands how to work with great players mm -hmm. and how to pick and choose his time versus allowing them to have their time. So mm -hmm. There is that aspect to him. Uh, a lot of the other stuff, like, I, I just don't know. Like, and, and the other thing, like, Christian Wood, I don't know what's going on there. Like, Christian Wood, they, they can't come to an agreement on an extension or they haven't been able to. Uh, he can make, I think, a lot more money if they wait until this offseason and then extend him. Again, maybe a guy that the Kings could look at. I, is that I mean, money there? I mean, is he worth I don't know. more than what he can get from Dallas? Well, well I don't think he's restricted either. Oh. And, yeah, the, yeah. and the problem Ooh. is uh, what James said. Christian Wood, I don't know what's going on there. Has been said a lot in yeah. his career. <laughs> yeah, there's something there's something about him. But like even in this last game where where you know they they beat the Clippers, um, he only played 17 minutes off the bench. And you know you're starting Josh Green, you're starting Reggie Bullock, you're starting Tim Hardaway Jr. and Dwight Powell. Like first of all, they don't have anyone that can slow down. Demonis right. Sabonis. Yeah. They also don't have anyone that can stay in front of uh De'Aaron Fox. Like Domas might have one of those first quarter double doubles tonight. Yeah. And the the deal with them too is like they gave up a lot of yeah. of defensive play when they Depth. moved away from Dorian Finney Smith. He's killed the Kings. Mm -hmm. Like he's a guy who has hurt the Kings multiple times. So I'm intrigued to see what this team looks like. And then you get to you might get to see him like two totally different versions of them. Like one night it's Kyrie show. The next night it's Luca's show with Kyrie as like secondary player. They've never played together. Like, how does that look? So I, I'm kind of, I want to see. Well, that's, and that's like. the yeah. unique thing though. We know Kyrie can play without the ball. We, I don't think we know if Luca can do that. I think we know he can't. Well, it, well, okay. I was trying to give him the benefit of yeah, that, but well, like I, I, and to give him the benefit, I don't think he's played with somebody as good as Kyrie. No, that's very. He true. definitely hasn't. Yeah, no, 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 that's very true. He definitely. Hasn't. So maybe with a guy like that, he's a little more willing to give up the ball, play off ball himself a little bit, and 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 have some type of flow. But uh, I look at this particular game, not this game because Luca's not playing. But you know, if he did and plays tomorrow, whatever. Um, I think, I think it's a it's a Bad matchup for the Mavericks, good matchup for the Kings. We talked about their their lack of anybody that can guard Sabonis and slow him down inside. There's that. Um, the style of play for the Mavericks, very offensive style, like free-flowing, a little resistance on the defensive end. I think that plays into the Kings' factors. And we talked about it earlier, and you just kind of look at you look at the team. And I know they looked good without Luka and with Kyrie. Uh, against the Clippers, yeah. but say Luca and, and Kyrie play together tomorrow, and let's say they go off for 60, 65 points or whatever, you got to find another 55 to 60 points to match up with the Kings. This isn't just get to 100, and I say that especially with Dallas because they don't play no defense. If it was a defensive stalwart going up against the Kings, like, yeah, maybe you're 60 from your two stars and you play good enough defense where you could hold them to 105 or something like that. That's not Dallas. Kings are going to put up points. So I said it earlier. <laughs> you guys know what I meant. You can't beat the Kings by trying to outscore them. <laughs> okay. You heard <laughs> it here first. If you score more than the Kings, you won't win. That's what Kenny said. That's yeah. science. That'll be, that'll be, that'll be the, it'll be a first in the NBA. Kings are looking to make history. Where is yes. Dallas? Dallas. Uh, well. Yeah. Dallas's defense is, is really, really close to the Sacramento Kings defense. Yeah. A one fourteen point uh, seven, and that was with uh, versus a one fourteen point nine for the Kings. And calling back on our Will Z conversation, I think it was two and eight in terms of yeah. offense. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's also that's with Dorian Finney Smith, who's mm -hmm. a very yeah. good they defender. Take a bunch of corner threes. That's mm -hmm. what Will Z was talking about. Earlier. Yeah, the corner that threes was, he that was his kills job. you. Yeah, oh. they are uh, second and and eighth in uh, offensive rating. The Kings are right there. They're point one behind the Nuggets again. So an offensive rating, an offensive rating. Their defensive rating keeps fluctuating between like, well, it's just in the one fourteens, but high one fourteen, low one fourteen. They move up to like 
20th. They drop back to 24th. It's not been great. I mean, that's again, that's what I want. But it's know funny. 20 is like, oh, 20th. If they were 19th, that'd be elated. <laughs> yeah. If they were, if they could get to like 16, and that's where, P, like, again, you could have added one or two pieces and got better defensively. You can't fix everything and be a top five defensive team. You could have got better without any question. I mean, there, there are ways to get better defensively. And I don't, I don't mean to take it from defense off because you're, you're right. I was thinking about something earlier. Have the Kings, one of the best offenses in the game, right? It really seems, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong. They haven't had everybody clicking at the same time, except for like one game. <laughs> I was, it's either Malik is hitting and Kevin's yeah. not, or vice versa. Maybe TD hits when both Trey Lyles is hitting because Malik can't hit and Kevin. Like they've had one game really where everybody was cooking, and it was. I thought a about that class. earlier when Ham mentioned the way Harrison started the season, and it reminded me of how Kevin Herter started the season. Hmm. And it's like Kevin was way up here and Harrison was way down here, and I feel like they've been doing this. And maybe Kevin isn't where Harrison was to start the season, yeah. but he certainly dropped down from where he was. I definitely thought he was shooting 90% from three all season <laughs> long. Uh, but that but that plummeted down a little bit as Harrison rose. And it just, you know, if if, if I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a double team with my partner Kenny here, because if if these if all of these if 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 basketball is so different after the all-star break, well, what if the Kings start hitting? offensively all of them what if what if they're what if their little their little season quirks start to line up then yo dallas has a problem Man. all of these other teams have a problem a scary yeah. season yeah i mean I, th I think it's interesting you're talking about how herder and, and barnes have kind of fluctuated like this and then you have monk who's literally like <laughs> that's <laughs> right like a three-year-old grabbed your but your that's awesome and yeah started scribbling like what in the world are you doing yeah, and you know, like uh, we've seen a lot of the players, and, and he's that. up right now. Like Monk is up right now. Oh yeah, he's way up. He's he is really, up. really good right now, and he's played exceptional. And he's he's really taking control of the second unit. He's passing. He's breaking down the defense. He's got his flash going. And, you know, all the flare out. Um, and he did that on the road. Like if he does that tonight, man, that building's gonna explode. It's gonna be some energy tonight. Too. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna be. Yeah, it's gonna be a night at the Golden One Center tonight. For I sure. think so too. I, I'm really excited to see what this team looks like like with a week and a half off because they have a long all-star break. They have a much longer all-star break than a lot of other teams mm -hmm. um, because they don't play after what they have a, their final games on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So they got a couple of days there to play with. Um, the shooting usually is impacted greatly by the legs. So if, if this team gets a couple of days off to really relax and let their bodies heal up and maybe we'll see a really, really strong, uh, it, initial come out coming out of the break where they are firing on all cylinders. Domas obviously will too, and Scott Moak is the ultimate pro. This, the, the, the Sacramento Kings game ops are the best in the business. Mm -hmm. De'Aaron Fox is going to get one of the biggest pops in Sacramento Kings history tonight. Oh yeah, when his name is called as an all, when he's introduced and that crowd gets to congratulate him for the first time. Yeah. That's going to be a moment tonight yeah. at the Golden One Center. Absolutely, yeah. you're going to think the all-time scoring record was just broke. Stop the game. is going to be out there with rain, and his parents are going to come to. Oh, it's it's he's going to think it's starting five. Yeah, it's 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 going to be. If De'Aaron showed up in all black tonight, it's over. It's you, over. You know, I thought about that though when I originally thought he was going to be on All Star team. I think I told you about it. Like you just you just think back to. Um, the the day he was drafted and the hoax that like there was a love affair like it seemed like he wanted to be here and we wanted him bad and we got together and we loved each other from the start and you saw him i know we talked about it earlier but you saw him come from a, a young man to a man and we've seen like he's it feels like he's been here forever it's only been like six years but it feels like we've seen him from like this young spiky haired kid to this grown man and, and, and he's made it, he's done it. You know, we, we asked, we thought we were getting an all-star. We thought we were getting a franchise player and, and somebody that could change the franchise and damn it. He's done it. He's done it. He's actually achieved it, man. It's a, it's a hell of a moment. It's actually, it's really cool. 
um, you know, I've covered this team for, this is 13 years, but to watch like DeMarcus Cousins come in the league as a 19 year old and play out the course of his career and see where things went. And unfortunately, you know, where his career path went, but then to get to start, start over with someone else and get to see them like have a really rough rookie year and second year. Oh, so much better. Third year, like, Oh, oh. fourth year. He's incredible. Takes a little bit of a step back. You know, the instability of the franchise started to wear down on him. And then to see him come full circle and get to have this moment. I I'm super excited for him because you're right. Like, you know, you see this little spiky haired kid and he weighed like 165 pounds when he came in the league. Um, but to be there and talk to him all the way through and to see like the brash, cocky Fox that it still comes out on occasion because that's who he is. But to watch him grow up, it's been really, really a pleasure. He's a good kid. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed like being around him in this setting. And uh, it's cool to see where I, you know, there are times where I can say that with cousins, but there are also a lot of dark times like, oh, man, what are we doing? Like. You know, it's hard because you, you, as a journalist, you're not allowed to like step in and like, man, can I help you with something? <laughs> can I, can I just like try to like, yeah. like it's really hard because, but De'Aaron's never strayed from a path. Mm -hmm. Like it's always been like, oh, he's a good kid. He's just waiting for the right opportunity. Well, I won't ask you to predict the basketball game. So who you got Sunday hammer? 31, 20. Jesus. Oh, yeah, Chiefs, his boy, he, Chiefs. He didn't watch Patrick well, Mahomes come up from. Yes, in, 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 in fact, he did. That's uh, right. In fact, he did. I know you got Kansas City. Yeah, I think I, it's going to be a close game. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like the score. But you did bring something up earlier that I absolutely believe is a factor in this. And like Andy, Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes showing up again and losing. Yeah, I can't. I don't. I, I don't see they, that. They're going to have that look in their eyes. I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't see that happening. They know what that feels like. Uh, if you're listening on ESPN 1320, uh, if you're listening on 98.5 FM, uh, KRX QHD2, if you're listening on the Odyssey app and you want more Kings coverage, you missed Trista Crick, you missed Kyle Matson. you want to recap everything James Ham said to get you ready uh, for the Sacramento Kings and the Dallas Mavericks, don't move. We're going to run it back for you next on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. Go Kings, we're coming for you, Luca.